walk-in cooler condenser. I just powered it off, but this has a slow leak. We've had to top it off a couple times over the last few months, so it's time to kill the monster. Um, just aesthetically, look at this cap tube. That is covered in oil. So, what do you want to bet? May have to put a little pressure on the low side. Uh, let's see. So I'm just using my gauges to bring some of that 300 psi from the high side over to the low side, so that we can put pressure on the switch. See if it's. take the cover off and see if it's inside those diaphragms go and then it's a tricky uh tricky leak to find because it never bubbles anywhere Sorry, it's hard for you to see what I can see in there to see. Crazy, it doesn't look like it's blowing bubbles on me. We've got, let's hold it up again. We have got 75 PSI on the high side, which should be enough to blow bubbles. my way through here I'm gonna go grab the detectors I'll grab the whisper and I'll grab the look at that I mean that is this is definitely oil no dispute in that All right, give me a few. Let me uh, let me get some more information, and we'll circle around. All right, I have drenched this thing, and I get no hits anywhere. I do get some hits, not on the whisper, but on the actual refrigeration leak detector, all in here. So. I mean, which picture these fans are running, so they're always pulling air this way. So the fact that this whole thing is coated isn't surprising if it's coming from here and then the wind is just moving it down. Uh, so I am going to, I've made it harder on myself by equalizing this. So I'm going to bump it. The solenoids closed downstairs, but when I bump it, we should. Up. Oh, it's actually the solenoid's not closed downstairs. All right, I'm gonna let this run until it satisfies so we get the box at its coldest starting position and I'm gonna get the prep work done of getting a new low pressure control installed. Take a good note of where you're at now so you don't have to monkey around with the settings as far as your cut-ins like 22 on this with a differential of 17. So it's just gonna cut out at five or six PSI. So. All right, I'll catch you in a minute. All right, so she's satisfied, which means the solenoid downstairs cut off, which means our pressure is 
less than 10. So I'm going to be able to back that off and do a hot swap where, you know, there's less than 10 PSI. I can back that off, put my thumb on it, and then put the new one on. I'm going to put a drop of nylog thread sealant on here first. And then when I get that off, I'll put a drop on there. Uh, not going to video the actual swap because I'm going to need both hands. And I'm solo today. But be right back. All right, welcome back. Um, just my two cents on something because I get doing things and then I don't, uh, I don't bother showing, right? So this, I love this tool because it's a skinny, right? This allows me to get right in there with an adjustable to give the back up so that when I tighten this, I'm not twisting that off. Because my full size uh, 3 8 to fit on there, it just, the width of it was a, was a problem. So this little Klein wrench, but you can see it's a half. So it lets you bite in to narrow places, but put a drop of nylog on everything, uh, put the backup wrench on it, torqued it down, Again, there's not a whole lot of pressure on the system at the moment. What I'll do is I'll actually bring some pressure to the system backwards just to put a little bit of, little bit of blood on that. Let's give you the first check here. Oh boy. Well, so with 100 PSI, I'm sealed up. We're good there. All right, so I've got her already wired in over here. I mean, it's just simple, right? You're just interrupting a leg. Uh, this one is slightly different from a setup perspective. So the old one has a cut in and a differential. And then I love how they have to explain it like, hey, the cut out is cut in less differential. So if you don't speak math, this one is even easier. Where do you want it to cut in? Where do you want it to cut out? So when the solenoid opens up and I rush to 25 PSI, I want it to cut in. And then as it's pumping down, uh, right now this is set for what? 15, that's too high. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna dial this cut out down to, this is a cooler, so it should never be running 10, but we're gonna set it to 10. Um, so I've taken my, I don't like coiling it on itself because over time I feel like they rub out and then you get these little holes in the cap tubes. So it's not nice and smooth and pretty, but it's there. So with that being said, it's not going to come on because I have the thermostat turned off. Wow. Okay. So point of clarity. When I powered this down, it killed the power downstairs. When I turned it on, it turned back on the thermostat and we're running. So now I truly want to let it satisfy and make sure that the uh, pressure controller cuts it out when it gets to 10 PSI. So we wait. All right, it should be pumping down right now. We'll see if it shuts off at about 10 PSI. Bing. That sucker is calibrated, man. It should have right at 10 PSI. And then when the solenoid opens up, that's going to go up to 60 or 70. And we're going to be rolling. So, pressure switch replaced. I want to pull a... I want to pull a hoobity on this. I want to hook this straight up to my nitrogen bottle. Put some pressure on it. See if we can't hear it squeal. It may be hard to see, but see the bubbles coming out? Definitely got bubbles inside. So. Yeah, confirmed. Waiting for it to cycle back on one time so we can just verify it cuts back in. Clean it up, put the top on. And we're gonna be a wrap on this one.